Recently, I played through Wolfenstein The New Order with the help of some friends to kill Nazis and tear down their government where the rich control the laws. Women and minorities are oppressed, and anyone whose gender identity deviates from the status quo is considered a criminal and locked up or killed. Oh no, wait, that's modern day America. The following is a completely accurate summary of the campaign. Trust me. If you enjoy the video and hate Nazis, don't forget to like and subscribe. The game begins with a dream about the American dream, which is actually an attainable goal in 1946 and not a pipe dream because people could afford a nice house for their family on a singular income. We snap back to reality and our lazing around is interrupted by Piss Boy, and that's like the only chance I'm gonna have to include a trophy reference in a video, let me have this one. The air fleet starts getting attacked and our plane gets damaged, so we go through a tutorial in a corridor so linear that you literally can't move left or right, and then we lose everyone's luggage because we work for American Airlines. Then we go straight into the first turret section because this game came out in 2014 when literally every game had to have a turret section because Call of Duty did it, so that must mean it's good and that everyone likes it, right? After pointing and clicking for a bit, we get hit by a plane and die, and that's the end of the game. Death at the gates again. All in my name. But then Piss Boy saves us by performing extreme CPR, and we spend a little while standing around because that's engaging game design, at which point we decide to kill ourselves by jumping out of the plane, so Piss Boy joins us. But before we can do that, we're almost killed by another plane, which would have ruined our suicide, so we tough it out and do the jump ourselves. Unfortunately, we're rescued by Piss Boy and get pulled in the other plane, and they tell us to watch out like we can do literally anything while we're being held out of the side of a plane by them. Our old plane cuts a hole in the new one, but that's okay, decompression isn't an issue because it hasn't been invented yet. So we just casually stand around while those huge chunks blown out of the hull of the plane because that's only a minor inconvenience. We head to the cockpit and pick up a guy off the floor that we slap because we mistook him for a demon because of how creepy he looks, and then spend some more time standing around doing nothing and the plane crashes. But luckily we're right next to our destination, so we get out and swim until we're picked up by a Getrek that puts us back in our plane like a good boy. We get a phone call from Piss Boy and Whiny and contemplate the logistics of Nazis actually winning World War II with late night gaming. Oh yeah, he's here. Well, are we are we doing like that whole misconception that like Germany, the Nazis were like technological big brains? They were That's stupid. What is. That's this whole premise of this game is that the oh. Germans are like super techy and so advanced over everyone else. That's fun for like pulp and science like, fiction because like the yeah. Nazis are super easy villains. But like in the real world, everyone has this misconception that like the Nazi wonder waffle program. It's like, no, the Nazis it's like, oh yeah, if the Americans never invented this automatic gun, the Nazis would have won the war. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, no. Yeah, the yeah, Nazis are dumb. They wasted like, a lot the of their money. The Nazis just were just stuff. grasping for the whole time in that war. Well, even like, like their technological advances, I feel like people are like, look at this crazy tank or this giant gun. It's like, you know why I didn't win the war? Because it was inefficient. It was way too big and clunky. After catching up with Piss Boy and Whiny, we blow up a turret and kill Nazis because everyone knows that the only good kind of Nazi is a dead one. And then I fuck with the game and remove screen shake because there's a hell of a lot of it and it was making me ill. Pretty much everything still works fine except crouching happens in an instant now. There's no other negative side effects until later. We'll get to that. We give some Nazi special hugs and invent a hole in the ground and then crawl through a vent. Uh, excuse me? What? Look, I can have some suspension of disbelief for a fictional world where Nazis ended up with advanced machinery, but you expect me to believe that a six foot three, 245 pound man can fit through this opening? Bull fucking shit. We halo a turret and use it to mow down waves of Nazis until we open a door and get attacked by a Getrek that chomps down on our leg. But that's okay, there's no negative consequences for getting your leg crushed between metal spikes. Whiny saves us by playing fetch with the robot dog. Uh, huh? Did the Nazis really make these robot dogs out of actual dogs? Okay. Piss Boy fills everyone in on the plan while we're sitting on the beach right before the bad guy's lair as if anyone here didn't already know the plan. Well, I guess the US military sending troops overseas without actually explaining to them what they're doing isn't that far-fetched. And now we're climbing a wall and playing whack a crap, which is totally engaging and definitely not really stupid. A big ass plane crashes into the wall and drops a bit of rubble, but that's only a minor inconvenience, so we continue waddling our way up the wall. Unfortunately, Nameless Joe, who's gonna get the gate open, got killed, so now we've gotta do it ourselves because we're an FPS protagonist. If we're not constantly being told to complete stupid objectives, are we really playing an FPS game? We clear out the castle and accidentally wander into a stealth kill, which is fine with me. I do all my best work accidentally. After clearing out some spectators, we jump across a gap and Piss Boy doesn't catch us because he doesn't love us. So we do it again, and this time he actually does catch us, but then we fall through the floor and get crushed by a rock and die. And that's the end of the game. But then there's more. Somehow, only one person suffered any injuries from falling over 50 feet, and we wake up in a... Can I even show this room on YouTube? It's really, really fucked up. Whiny accidentally turns on the room's incinerators, and we find the key to the door on the first try, so we pick up broken feet and make it to the next room, where we're ambushed by Mark I Iron Man armor that kills... 
whoever this guy was, and he runs around a bit while we shoot him repeatedly until he finally remembers to stop being a bullet sponge and die. Surprise, this was a trap by Wrinkled Nutsack, the guy we were sent to kill. He takes off our shirts like a fucking pervert and then makes us choose who has to die, the cool Scottish dude that we've spent most of the game with, or creepy blue-eyes whiny boy who's done nothing at all so far. I think you can guess who we chose. Wrinkled Nutsack cuts out Whiny's eyes and fucks off, and we escape one of those bullet sponges by stabbing it once in the kidney. Seriously? I put like a hundred rounds in one of those guys earlier. We break all the incinerators in the room so we don't get baked into a cake, and learn a hot wiring minigame, which is just about as exciting as it looks. You do this several times throughout the game for some reason. We jump out of the window and get our head sliced open by some shrapnel from the huge explosion that happened, and fall into the ocean and die, and that's the beginning of the game. We go through a montage where we're picked up by German doctors and it's revealed that we've got brain damage via a huge chunk of metal in our skull, so I guess our name is Punished Venom Snake now. The doctors send us to a mental hospital where it's revealed that the Nazis are kidnapping mentally ill people to use as science experiments, which the doctor isn't happy with, so at least we know he's a good guy. Another montage happens where we learn about the family insane asylum and that the Nazis come by every once in a while for more patients. Then the game finally starts back up with the Nazis shutting the asylum down. We steal a knife as they start murdering everyone. The family tries to stop them, but gets murdered, except for Sign of Music, who gets carted off to Texas, which is a fate worse than death. Then we get up and murder a Nazi, and it's revealed that we're still in peak physical condition, despite the fact that 14 years have passed, because Snake's will to kill Nazis is so strong that it allows his body to retain its muscles as long as there's still Nazis alive. Which is good, because having to crawl along the ground as an atrophied hospital patient wouldn't have been fun. Yeah, I'm talking about you opening the Metal Gear Solid 5. You suck. We give some Nazi special hugs and kill everyone in the courtyard to save Sound of Music and borrow a car that we drive because that's a good idea. Let the guy who just woke up from a 14-year coma drive the car. We immediately fall asleep, but are woken up by a Nazi, who we kill easily after trading places with Sound of Music, who's probably a lot more fit to drive considering she wasn't in a coma for 14 years. After making our way over the river and through the woods to Grandmother's house, we find a Nazi that was hiding in the trunk, so he feels the full might of a woman scorned before the game fades to family dinner. Turns out the Nazis won World War II, which is just as unbelievable as Russia successfully invading the US in Call of Duty, but you know, whatever. Snake wants to find out where the Nazis are keeping the resistance fighters, so we head downstairs to ask him nicely where our bitch is at. As we're getting our Ask Nicely gear on, he escapes his chair and starts stabbing us, and then just kind of repeatedly stabs us a few times until I realize that I'm supposed to stab him back, and I'm pretty sure this is everyone's reaction in this scene. We ask him nicely and he tells us to go fuck ourselves, so we prepare to trim a little off the top, and he finally bitches out and tells us exactly what we want to know because he's a coward. And then we give him a haircut anyways. Oh no wait, that was a head cut. Yeah. Snake gets dressed in an iconic I am the main character leather jacket and we head out, but unfortunately we're immediately found out, so Johnny Knoxville revokes the Nazi's head privileges and tells us to revoke everyone else's. So we head off to do just that. The game tells us we can do it stealthily, but what's the fun in killing Nazis if they don't know they're all gonna die? The gate is shut, so we head inside to get it open and relieve some more Nazis of their pitiful lives. After opening the gate, we get to another area full of Nazis that aren't dead, so we decide to be the change we want to see in the world. We're ambushed by bullet sponges and play Ring Around the Rosie until they're both dead, and then sneak aboard a train... somehow. They kind of skip over that part. Snake fucks up making coffee, and then some Nazis walk in, and as we head back to our room, we're interrupted by Frau Ugly and Lord Farquaad, who try to make us play a card game, but we immediately go for the gun and win the game. Or not. We play the Nazi stupid card game and call a guard a bitch on our way back to Sound of Music. Bitch. And mess around with the coffee physics like a child, and then have sex with Sound of Music like an adult, which makes it really hard for gamers to relate to the main character anymore since they've never touched a woman. After getting to the hotel, we parkour across some rooftops and get a laser cutter, which is this game's silly physics gun, so of course I draw a penis with it because I am a mature adult. Don't act like you didn't do it too. We shimmy slowly across a rooftop and sneak onto a prison transport, and then break into the prison where we're attacked by another Getrek that we run away from so we don't get wrecked, and then fit through another vent that we definitely can't fit through so we can drown a Nazi in his own piss. We kill our way to the cell block that's holding all of our friends and cut them loose, and surprise, it's Piss Boy, who is conveniently in this exact prison, still alive after 14 years. Not that he was in prison for 14 years, but you, you get what I mean. Nazis come to stop us from escaping, so we sneak into a vent, and I'm glad that Matt's not here to make an Among Us joke. We kill the Nazis and cause a prison riot so we can escape the compound and steal some bikes with Reznov to drive away with... No, wait, wrong script. Er, well, not that wrong. We steal a vehicle and smash it through a window. But then it flips right over, conveniently right over top of Sewer Grate, that we break open and fall into to meet back up with Sound of Music and steal another car. We ditch the car and jump into some water and find a locked grate, which I'm luckily able to open with my laser cutter, but if I didn't have it, we'd have been screwed. We're introduced to the members of the Resistance, and whoa. We spend some time wandering around the base collecting files. Also, this happens. Ellen DeGeneres fills us in on Project Whisper, the Nazi's ultimate stash of super dog food that we're going to steal and eat so we can become the ultimate Nazi killers, because it's probably full of meth or something. I don't know what they feed their dogs. We take an Uber to the head Nazi research facility, and after letting us out, our Uber driver suicide bombs the front entrance because he hates Nazis real fucking bad. Ten stars. We almost get head, but nobody wants a blowjob from a Nazi. The only thing they should have stuffed in their mouths is the end of my gun. 
and then I get stuck. You know, I gotta have puzzles oh, in my shooter cool. game. See, you can't fit through that, <laughs> but you can fit through that vent. It's kind well, What would happen context. if you ran out of power? I did. He is out of power. Oh my. <laughs> there has to be a charging station. They they you can't go. be that. Ah! Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. oh god, there's a dog. Fuck. <laughs> Fucking! I can't make it through. I fucked myself. Oh, time to restart from the last checkpoint. And now it's time for killing Nazis to Doom music. It's not actually Doom music, but it's by McGordon, so it's Doom music. We wander into a storeroom full of ancient high-tech Jewish artifacts, and that's not a joke. That's actually what these things are. And we steal a laser gun, which replaces our laser cutter, so we draw a chode because there wasn't enough space for a full penis. Unfortunately, we didn't find the Nazi stockpile of super dog food, but we did find a bunch of top secret silent aircraft, so we changed the plan to stealing them instead of the dog food. Or was that the original plan? I really need to stop eating dog food and actually pay attention to the game. Everyone hang glides into the hangar, and we pick up Ellen DeGeneres to take her to one of the helicopters and accidentally take her to the wrong place, so we have to walk back really slowly. We fly the helicopters back to the resistance base and do some more meandering around while we face the repercussions of our actions from earlier in the form of a half-naked Scottish man getting upset at us for choosing the whiny bitch instead of him. So he hands us some keys and we bumble around a bit to find a piece of moldy concrete. As we cut the moldy concrete, we accidentally upset Max Haas, who is the best character in this game, and then we find out about Santa Claus's background, about how he was a Nazi until his beliefs were challenged and he chose to turn against the Nazis and end up losing his wife and son over the choice, but he still chose to join the resistance. That's how you write a sympathetic character. They were part of the bad guys, but then they realized the bad guys were the bad guys, so now they're against the bad guys. And the bad guys are still the bad guys. The word bad guys has lost all meaning now. Turns out, Nazi concrete is actually based on a recipe created by Jews, and if the entire building blocks of their society being made out of something created by their so-called enemy isn't the definition of irony, then I'm going to hunt down someone from Merriam-Webster and give them a stern talking to. And now for something no one was expecting from a first-person shooter, a concentration camp. Wait, you mean this game actually touches on the difficult parts about Nazi rule and doesn't just skip over it for the glorified killing spree? There was actually thought and effort put into a game about Nazis that have robot dogs and a base on the moon? I'm getting ahead of myself. We find out that the guy we're looking for is in another cell block, so we break our concrete mixer and trade uniforms with the guy who's conveniently the same size as we are, and use it to locate Larry David, who is the second best character in this game. He agrees to help us if we help him shut this concentration camp down, and we immediately agree because that's the easiest choice I've ever made in my entire fucking life. We sneak into a building and get jump scared by a Nazi who dies us up and starts torturing us, but he left the knife in us so we take it out and use it to stab every Nazi in the area, which would have been incredibly dumb if this game didn't already establish that we can shrug off being stabbed multiple times in regular gameplay, so it's actually narratively consistent to be able to do this. We disable the security system and sneak into camp command to eat some dog food and steal a battery, but accidentally electrocute ourselves and get caught by Frau Ugly, who sets us up for execution but didn't remove the battery from our hands before that. So we give it to Larry David, who uses it to attack the Nazis and crush Frau Ugly's head, so now her face matches her soul. And then to add insult to injury, the robot throws her off a cliff. Unfortunately, she survives that, but I'm getting ahead of myself again. And now we get to drive the robot, which would have been a lot cooler if there wasn't so much screen shake and motion blur that it's impossible to actually parse any information on the screen. After loading up everyone in the trucks, Frau Ugly ambushes us and unfortunately doesn't get run over as we peel out of there, but luckily we manage to get away. Larry David reveals that he's part of a secret Jewish Illuminati that is advanced technology that they'd hidden from the world, but Nazis found their stash and reverse engineered the technology to win the war. Does this mean that a Jewish space laser actually isn't out of the realm of possibility in this game? Also, this means that the Nazis owe literally all of their success to the Jewish. Whew. Larry David tells us that he can get us to another secret cache that the Nazis haven't found. We just need to steal a U-boat for him. No big deal. Time for more fetch questing around the hub area. Thank you for padding your six-hour game, Machine Games. At least we get to talk to Bomberman, who's the third best character in this game. After getting the welding equipment to Larry David, Snake has sex with Santa Music again, which I can't show you on YouTube, but you're really not missing much. 2014 character models having intimate moments isn't exactly something you pay for. Well, technically I paid for it because I bought the game, but you, you know what I mean. We get in a small submersible to do some puzzle solving that takes me way too long before killing a bunch of Nazis to steal a train with absolutely no problems whatsoever. We sneak into a torpedo to smuggle ourselves into the U-boat and have several gunfights in a small pressurized tube underwater because that's a good idea. We regroup with the rest of the resistance and Larry David takes us down to the secret underwater Jewish check trove that looks like the loot cave from the end of Pirates of the Caribbean. Once we're inside the vault, Ellen DeGeneres lets us know that she's got us a flight to the moon so we can steal the Nazis' nuclear launch codes, and Piss Boy shows off his brand new super suit that we don't even get to use in this game. Cut to a bridge, where I immediately fall out of the helicopter because I've got one brain cell and I took a vacation. We kick a thingy out of the helicopter in front of the train and it absolutely destroys the hell out of the bridge, so we get dropped off to find the guy whose spot we'll be stealing on the moon flight so we can steal his ticket. And then my fucking with the game finally catches up to me five hours in. If I have the head bob turned off, it breaks the alignment of the scope of this gun, for some reason.
After restarting the game, we poke a Nazi in the butt with a grenade and make him fall off a bridge, and fit our way through some tight spaces so we can kill some more Nazis on our way to get our ticket. We're grabbed by a Nazi, but Piss Boy cuts his head off for us and tells us to jump in, which I do with absolutely no problems whatsoever. <laughs> Did you just fucking jump in? He said jump in. But not in the water. Okay, um... One more time? What the fuck? I have no idea. Shut the fuck up, Blazkowicz! Maybe put the du dual-wield weapons away? Does that make me go slower? I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's stopping you from doing a grab animation? I don't know. Oh, it does make me go slower. Piss Boy drops us off a little closer to our destination, and we steal a ticket to get aboard the moon flight, where we sneak into the baggage claim and grab our stuff so we can start killing everyone. And also, we get a laser gun because we're on the moon. Mirror, mirror on the wall. <laughs> Who's the best Jew killer of them all? Or Nazi killer of them all? Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a God. slip up, dude! <laughs> Oh, that's a very bad slip up. After stealthing our way through the base, we get like 50% of our screen included by a spacesuit and bounce around on the surface of the moon to a flashback of the concentration camp. And Snake cuts the tattoo right off of his arm, which would have been insane for anyone that wasn't him. We stealth our way to the nuclear launch codes. Stealth. Stealth. I said stealth. What about how it works? As long as you say you're in stealth, you're in stealth. Yep, I'm stealthing right now. And print them out for easy transport so we can stealth our way to the exit. No, hang on, I'm stealthing. Excuse me. You, I don't think you can stealth him. There, stealth! Stealth! <laughs> stealth! A Nazi relays to their bosses that we're stealing his ship, but Snitches get stitches and this guy is a Nazi, so we make sure his wounds won't even heal with stitches, and then crash the ship back to Earth. We go through some bullshit, but luckily there was a Nazi officer to break our fall with his head. I'd thank him, but I don't thank Nazis. After killing every other Nazi in the area, we mirror's edge our way through some more Nazis and go through a stupid boss fight against a tripod that isn't difficult or anything, it's just really, really, really tedious. We have a flashback about Wrinkled Nutsack before getting saved by Santa Claus and find out that the Nazis are invading the resistance base. So Santa Claus turns a crowd into a pancake and gets unceremoniously shot to death. So Max goes apeshit and sacrifices himself to let us in. Also, can I just say, taking a hub area and turning it into a level full of enemies is one of my all-time favorite game tropes. Seriously, you take an area that the player knows well and recontextualize it, and now suddenly their safe space isn't so safe. It feels very personal. We accidentally slide into some robots, so Ellen DeGeneres saves us with a super suit that we don't get to use. Yes, I'm still salty about that. And we escape on a helicopter, and fuck yeah, Max survived. And actually, so did Santa Claus. Except, then he dies in this scene, and it's very sad. And no, I'm not crying, I just... Opened up a water park in my eyeballs. We have another dream about the American dream, this time with Sound of Music and the wife roll, but we snap back to reality in the U-boat. We finalize the details to infiltrate Wrinkled Nutsack's compound and save everyone that got captured, and shoot another ball at a wall and it goes balls to the walls and we kill our way through all the Nazis inside. After listening to Wrinkled Nutsack taunt us, we get jumped by Lord Farquaad and he drugs us and tries to cut us open, but we tear his ear off and he's incredulous about the fact that we can even move at all when he's pumped us full of enough drugs to kill an elephant. But that's the power of killing Nazis, bitch. So we stab him in his stupid face. We take an elevator down to the prison cells, but it turns out everyone was already escaping on their own. So we take an elevator back up, but it gets stuck. So we help everyone out, only to get separated and stuck in the elevator alone. Oh god, this is my nightmare. Wrinkled Nutsack taunts us again and shows us that he kept Whiny's brain in a jar, and we see a really, really graphic scene of it getting removed while he was still alive, which I definitely did not want to see, and definitely cannot show on YouTube. And then he loads Whiny's brain into a robot that we have to fight without all our guns. We disable the robot and Whiny apologizes for attacking us because he's got no control over the body despite being conscious, and he begs us to kill him to end his misery. So we blow up his brain and Wrinkled Nutsack shows up in a mech suit and I struggle through a stupid boss fight that never kills me, but it takes a really long time to figure out exactly what to do. You have to go to each edge of the arena and use some cannons to shoot down some blimps in order to actually do damage to his mech. Wrinkled Nutsack drops into an indoor arena that's really blurry and fiery and I get killed by the environmental fire, which is my only death in this entire boss fight, it's not even because of the boss. After finally hitting the bullet sponge enough times, we watch a cutscene of Wrinkled Nutsack bottling up Whiny's brain and say something badass to him. I would never need it to you. Fine. I will gut you standing. 
And we stab him a few times before he pulls the pin on a grenade, so we just stand there staring at it and take the full force of it to the face. But that's only a minor inconvenience, so we crawl over to a window and make sure everyone's safely out of the way before giving the orders to launch the nukes, and that's the end of the game. And no, we don't die from this. Game over. Special thanks to my patrons, whose continued support makes these videos possible. If you want to support the channel as well, patrons get a special avatar that goes at the end of the videos they help support, as well as early access to videos and full res artwork from thumbnails.